Hey everyone, today I want to go over how to use the simple yet fun fluttering phrases package for Dart. I will link to this package in the description, but it essentially allows you to generate titles based off of a randomly selected attributive, such as an adjective or verb, a noun, and generated token suffix. The package's behavior is highly configurable, so I'll talk through each form of customization, but its defaults are rather sensible as well. So, I've prepared a Dart project which has the dependency specified in my pub spec, and I have a main method. First, let's generate a few titles with the default options. First things first, the only method the package provides is generate. So we can go ahead and type and import that. If you're comfortable with using the package with the included top level declaration, that's fine. But I prefer to provide a name for the library, such as phrases. So I add an as declaration to the import and prefix the generate call with that phrases um, title or that phrases name. Now I can prefix my call to generate with phrases to call the method. So it kind of doesn't pollute my scope with the generate method. Now we can just simply use all of the default values and print out a generated value by using Dart's built-in print method. Um, then you can run your program and you can see here that I've generated a title. In this case, Enchanted Flora 7889. So this is the attributive, this is the noun, and this is the generated token suffix. We can go ahead and we can add a loop around this, say that loops 10 times to print out multiple titles to see a variety. And you can see we got a bunch of cool titles here. Infinite Sparkle, Quaint Pool, Mellow Glimmer, Lingering Cliff, Avian Villa. And there's lots of cool um, titles that can be generated. So definitely give this a shot. Um, and the defaults do work. But yeah, sometimes the default behavior doesn't exactly match our use case and we need to configure some things. For example, Perhaps you want to change the delimiter, which by default is a dash, but perhaps we want it to be a title, uh, a space instead. So what we can do is we can specify the delimiter uh, named argument and change it to any string we want, even like a, a like a different name, but that would look kind of weird. So a delimiter such as like a dash, a slash, um, something is often better. But we could even use a space and we can see what that looks like by running. We can see we kind of got these things that almost look like a proper noun phrase, but then there's a there's a token appended on the end. That's kind of cool. You can really use anything you want. But if we're going to use spaces, perhaps the token seems a bit strange. So luckily, we can completely eliminate the token by setting the named parameter include token to false. Now, when we run the program, we just have simple noun phrases, no longer mangled by any strange token suffix. Say you do want the token though, but want to change it up a bit, you can change both the length and the radix. Let's start with the length, removing the include, include token override and setting the name parameter token length to eight to introduce some more randomness and a longer title. This is great but it still only uses the digits zero through nine. Luckily, we can control this a bit by specifying a radix or base to use to generate the token. This can be any value between two and 36, but common values include two for binary tokens and 16 for hexadecimal. If we decide we want hexadecimal, we can set the token radix named parameter to 16. And after running that, we can find that there are some letters now as hexadecimal is defined by the digits zero to nine and the letters A through F. Um, and you can see we see no letters farther than F. Um, feel free to play around with these, determine what you like, but keep in mind, if you set include token to false, no token or delimiter before it will be included. Perhaps you found a combination you like. But while your application is running, you want a consistent title based off of some piece of information. In that case, you can manually specify the seed the random, random number generator is based off. 
if we set this to say five with the name parameter seed, every iteration of the loop, we get the same result. In this case, quiet diamond 2195. One common use of this may be to generate a title for a user's name, in which case you can use the hash code of their name. For example, my name is Parlo. I could use the hash code, and this could be like my own personal title, Bold Flash 1001. But if I just want to use my real name, Parker, I could see like Swift Hall 8790. And you can also include all the other configuration options if you want. So this allows you to get some sort of consistent title for maybe a user or some other integer. Um, really anything as long as it fits in a Dart integer. Keep in mind though, this consistency is not guaranteed between runs or across different platforms due to uh, potential underlying changes of the random implementation. When you don't specify a seed, a shared random is used to generate all necessary random values, so there is no guarantee of consistency at all. Last, but definitely not least, is the ability to override the list of attributives and nouns set. Say I want to only include words that match my application or just like any different set of words. To do that, you can override the attributives and nouns name parameters and pass in your own list, such as attributives with uh, the strings beautiful, uh, fast, cool, and nouns, um, Harlow, YouTube and um, Dart, maybe even Party. They don't have to be the same length, but you can if you want to. Um, if we reformat that so it's easier to read, and then we run this again, we can see our generated titles only use combinations of these attributives and nouns that we specified. What if we still want to use the defaults from earlier though, while also including some of ours? Luckily, the library includes the defaults as top level fields that we can access. So we can use Dart spread operator to include the defaults in our lists. So for example, if I wanna include the default attributives as well, I can use the triple dot operator, which is for spread, that I can access the library and retrieve the default attributives field, which includes the list of all those default attributives. Then if we run the program again, we can see, okay, we get some of those cool attributives, um, from the defaults, but we still only have our manually specified nouns. And while in this case, none of the attributives were chosen from this, that's random and they could have been. Um, we can also include the default um, nouns as well by doing accessing our library and doing default nouns. And if we run that, we can see we have the default nouns as well. Uh, if we run it a few times, perhaps we'd get Oh yeah, see, we actually got YouTube here. So we can see that some of our nouns that we specify manually are also being included. It is random though. Keep in mind though, that both of these lists we specify must have at least one item or an argument error will be thrown as you can't really generate the titles without the attributives or nouns. Well, that's it for the library's functionality. If you do need any other behavior, feel free to manipulate the string afterwards, such as make it all uppercase by calling to uppercase. And we can run that. We can see, okay, now it's all uppercase. Um, but if the library doesn't support something that you'd like to support, feel free to create an issue or a pull request on, the, on its GitHub repository in the description. And I can definitely work with you to get some other features in that you'd like to see. So yeah. If you have any questions or you need any help, feel free to reach out here on YouTube or on the GitHub repository. Thanks for watching. I hope you give fluttering phrases a shot. Bye.